Hello everybody, this is Justin Scoffle here, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial for uh, tutorial series for Hyrule Magic. This is a link to the past for the Super Nintendo editor, Legend of Zelda. Um, I'll be providing links to everything I talk about here in the description. And I'll be doing this series in parts where I address different parts of the emulator so I can, you know, not overwhelm you with information. Um, the first thing I'll get off the bat is that Hyrule Magic is a difficult program to get used to, but a powerful one once you understand it. And what I mean by difficult is that um, this program was made a long time ago, and it has a lot of issues with it. It can cause a lot of bugs and corruption in your ROM if used incorrectly. And sometimes you could use it perfectly, you can make as many backups as you want, and you could still corrupt your ROM just because it was poorly programmed and there are edits that would need to be fixed entirely with a you know hex or ASM and some things that are just unfixable period so if you're not prepared to get down in the nitty-gritty with Hyrule magic um, if you just like to wait for a later link to the past editor which it's been practically two decades and we haven't seen a complete one yet um, Complete, complete new one. If you want to wait, go ahead. But for right now, this is what is what we use. This is what we gotta fuck with. Um, so first thing you'll notice is just that it's pretty basic. So you can open up, you can get your ROM. Um, you gotta figure out your own damn ROM, basically. And so I have just a normal link to the past American ROM. You can look at the information on it here. Um, see how much stuff you have left that you need to look at. Um, and then you can do things like clearing all the overworld items, sprites, blocks, torches, entrances, exits, bird locations. We'll get into all that. Um, it's recommended that if you're going to be doing a new hack, if you're not just going to be working on Link to the Past, um, it's recommended you clear all that out. So we'll get into each, each of these second sections within the videos. But today I'm just going to be starting with the overworld. and Because that's what a lot of people are going to get into first when they first you know, start making their ROM hack. I mean... Um, and the dungeon editor is just something I need to like really like sit down and write. Whereas the overworld editor, I'm so familiar with it and I'm so good with it um, that it's super easy to explain. So these area numbers here, these correspond to the world map location. So if you go to your world map, you can actually see which one of these numbers means what. And this is a great way to um, reference. And I'll get more into the world map editor in a later video as well. I just want to concentrate on the overworld editor so I don't have a 30 minute take like I did before. Um, so we'll start with area 00. This is the forest. Here we have the draw, select, rectangle tools. These are your basic comprisers. So you can either select tools or select, you know, graphics, move them around. Left click to grab a graphic and um, right click to draw down or select a graphic from your bank and your bank is customizable so within your bank you have a 32 by 32 block editor that allows you to comprise of different sprites here and blocks and within this block bank you can customize the palette um, flip of it and whether or not it's in front of link or not as well as the block type so this determines whether or not the block can be walked through or it's spiky or whatever and um, I'm gonna be providing the link to a PDF written by Severoff, which helps explain a lot of in-depth and FAQ type things about the program that is supplementary to this tutorial, but not necessary, because a lot of these things I kind of learned on my own, kind of where these blocks are and what they, you know, what, which palettes are what, just by looking at it within the graphics editor, by double-clicking these graphics, you can see your palette, and you could even copy this, pull it out, and put it into Photoshop to edit it. I mean, now, you ha would have to edit this in... Um, 16 bits so that you could reinsert it so if I were to try to copy this and put it back in it would not it would not fuck with me so it needs to be a certain way to edit it and I'll get into that in graphics editing because this isn't the most ideal way through Hyrule Magic there is an alternative way um, but for right now let's just concentrate on this so then we have the frame tool the frame tool is super simple it just shows us how the animations of our graphics will look say you in implemented some new animations Properties allows you to change the sign text, so every map only has a sign, one type of sign text, and you can change the music in between certain points of the game. It's pretty self-explanatory after rescuing Zelda, the Master Sword, Aghanim, whatever. And you have your ambient sound as well, like the rain, the earthquake, you know, the shit that goes on in the cool parts of the game. And you have the warp switch. 
um, the overworld in some maps like this one for example they share graphics and they share map data so if you were to copy this over switch over here it would be the same stuff now maps like the Great Pyramid and the castle um, those do not share map data and if you were to copy these over and look at the graphics the graphics number they are not the same so keep that in mind when you're editing maps when you're either clearing them out entirely or you know these maps can be edited but they can easily be detached but you just gotta keep in mind when you're editing graphics like when you edit this tree here these edits will they will correspond to every tree and in the dark world and the light world um so that's something to keep in mind um the first part right here this allows you to change the sprites and items on the screen so this is when it's raining this is when you're looking for the three pendants and this is when you're looking for the seven um seven crystals and so you can change what happens in your overworld and what different enemies so this is a way to level your game to deal with difficulty <coughs> then we have the background so this just displays the different backgrounds like the raining the the um the yeah, so the raining, the, the trees, all that good stuff. Uh, the grid allows you to see things when you're comprising images. It's, it's a grid. <laughs> the overlay shows you things on the map that are like interactable, I guess, in a way. So like if you were to use your boots and fly into that, you'd, you'd see, you know, that would be what comes out of it. <laughs> and um, with the entrance tool, this allows you to set what entrance... Um, to a dungeon so if you go to the dungeon area of the editor there's many 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 windows here where did I put that bad boy here he is so if you go to the dungeon section all these entrances correspond to different parts of the game so you can learn these either by looking at the PDF or just you know studying Link to the Past I guess and then the exit data you can actually set that yourself or just reference link to the past to see you basically you have to have a certain the right number for certain entrances in order to be able to come out of it from that dungeon so there are certain things like blacksmith's house doesn't matter however things that are very specific like the castle those do require exit data so they know where to put you out then there's the holes. These aren't recommended that you mess with too much, but if you would like to have sequences like in the original Link to the Past, where you fall down the holes, it requires a combination of the hole with the entrance number, so 7D, that would correspond to where Link falls in the game. Um, this is, this would, this would be it. Um, and as well as an item for hole, which can be changed with N and M. So these items can either be placed underneath something, say you want to put a heart there, a heart there. Um, Items in the overworld can cause a lot of glitches, so if you'd like to use them in your game, um, you have to clear them all out first and then insert them and always keep a close eye on how many items you're allowed in your overworld. Then we have the transport, which is basically like the bird locations where you can fly to, and the whirlpools. However, the whirlpools only work in the specific locations that they were programmed to work in. They're hard-coded, so I wouldn't recommend you move those, but if you have different significant areas in your ROM hack and you'd like to move the fly locations, that's perfectly fine. And we have sprites, so this is anything from NPCs that talk to you, to enemies, cuckoos, everything. Um, and they're super easy to understand, you just gotta go into them, you can right click insert sprite, and just look through the list. Some of these are a little difficult <laughs> to get the names on, like heart pieces, heart pie, don't know about that, you know, Zelda, this is, this is easy stuff. This is all learned through studying the game and kind of looking at it. I recommend before you start your own ROM hack that you look through the overworld editor and just kind of get used to the bad boy. So now I'll do some edits to the game and we'll, you know, we'll let that happen. Um, so we'll start somewhere simple like this. So I'm going to turn the markers off so this allows you to see the map for what it is. And we're just going to... Let's put some, let's, let's, let's change a palette here. So this is the, the graphics for the cliff side and now they have block type one. So we can, we can change the way these look a bit. Um, we're going underwater. I, th I think we want to go underwater. See, and you see how these are the same sprite? You just hit that X flip right quick, boom, boom, boom. You can do whatever you want, really. 
you know this could save you some graphics if you just x flip that bitch like what but no you, you, you can just stop being lazy so now look at that all these things have changed and that's just great um let's see what else uh we can edit this and let's say we want more grass we want more grass look at that just like that baby um Let's 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 do this like fucking 2006 style and just place what we think is cool where 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 we want to place it. Do whatever the hell we want. In fact, f fuck the custom. Oh, sh fuck the custom graphic. Um, we're just gonna move something here. We're gonna move these guys. So 39.4. So that's the graphics number. This corresponds to the specific graphics that you're going to be calling from. So. This I'll get into in graphics editing more in depth, but you can actually figure out which number belongs to which type of graphics. So castle belongs to 36 and it looks best in palette too. That's how they intended it. However, if you want, you can change the palette all you fucking want and you know, you can have your own style. And once I get to the palette section in another episode of this tutorial, you know, I'll be able to show you how to create your own palettes. However, Pyramid, it's got 15, looks best on 18, but again, you can change that. But when you change the graphics number, oh no, <laughs> oh no. But this is if you want to put something different on there and you don't want to use the graphics. Say, say you move the castle somewhere else, but you don't want to actually break the castle graphics. If you want to change this to something else, then find some new graphics that you haven't used yet, and then you want to edit these, you know? So then, when you when you go in and you edit these... You, you have different graphics showing up here. These are for the swamp, so now I can build my own swamp. Baby. Look at that. Here we go. So I can build my own swamp. We're not gonna, we're not gonna care about that too much right now, but those are how the graphics numbers work. Uh, sprite graphics, let's just, let's try putting like a, see what, sprite graphics number 15, see how that goes type of enemies we have here so down here is your sprites up here is your normal graphics these are your interactable graphics um it's <coughs> like birdman flute boy so we can put flute boy here so insert sprite flute flute boy and make sure we have those markers on so we can see and he'll be in the game not enough space for sprites whatever so that, that that notification there was just saying that you were going to be making a modification to just this area and not both areas um so we'll we'll have to move some sprites now won't we i know this looks like an eye rape i'm so sorry <laughs> oh goodness gracious so now we come here let's we got flute boy there okay um and i think this needs a little touch of let's see um We'll just, we'll just, we'll just run it. So, we're gonna be, I have quite the Zelda Oracle of Secrets folder here, as you can see. I am a Zelda Link to the Past hacking fanatic. I adore this game, everything about it, and that's why I want to do this, this tutorial series. So we can start the game just like this. And I'll, I'll hit that speed real quick. And we'll get to indoor editing real soon. But again, dungeon editor is just a fucking doozy. So now we can see our edits in real time. Now look at that. Where's the flute boy? Oh wait, I didn't. You have to check which one you edited. So the beginning, rain part. First part would be after we save Zelda. Flute Boy would be there. So I didn't do nothing wrong. I knew what I was doing. And look at these edits I made. They are they are here. And they're they're more ready than ever. So that's showing you that in real time you can edit your link to the past ROM and see what you've done and you can play with it, you can try it out, you can test it and I promise you if you really commit to a link to the past hack you will get so fucking good at the game. So um, if this is a series that interests you please let me know in the comments section and tell me if it feels like anything was poorly explained if you need something you know developed on further because i would like to address those things in future episodes and um 
I'll be explaining things like graphics editing, menu editing, dungeon editing, obviously, palettes, sprite inserting, like just, I'll try to cover everything I know about ROM hacking that helped make my hack Oracle of Secrets, which I will be, you know, I'll be doing an update video on that pretty soon. I'm just, I'm getting in contact with people now. There was good reception from the, um, from the video I released did pretty well for, for my standards so I'm excited to work with people for testing and helping out with the game so that we can have this released before 2018 is over and I'm just telling you I was able to make my whole ROM hack very I like my ROM hack a lot <laughs> so I made it very well with Hyrule Magic in my opinion and I think as long as you commit to using the program you're going to have you know a hack that can rival that of Parallel Worlds. I mean, Parallel Worlds was made years ago with Hyrule Magic, and a lot of the resources that we have now and a lot of things we know now about Link to the Past as a game, we didn't know back then. So, you know, it saddens me when I don't see more Link to the Past hacks out there, and this is why I'm making this tutorial series, because every tutorial for Hyrule Magic, which is a difficult-to-use program, is text box based because people are typing in text box with their alternative rock music on and their you know their triforce crest background and it's just like man can you just talk and i know i ramble a bit but i think that this would be a great way to not only promote my hack so that everyone plays it but you could also mess around with link to the past and who knows maybe you know you can you can make the next big Zelda hack. You could be there, because there's not a lot of us. There's not a lot of complete Zelda ROM hacks. You know, there's some custom edits. There's some things that make the game harder, change Link's hair, do all that stuff, but there's not a lot of huge overhauls with a lot of creativity in them. And that's what I want to see. So, like I said, if this series interests you, let me know. Let me know if anything in this video could be more furtherly explained, and I'll do a follow-up before the dungeon editing episode. And with that, this video is a wrap. Thank you for watching.